seemed like the perfect crime. It's and for a while, it looked like it might just Don't have worked. A, a cool million pinched from under the nose of one of the country's most popular stars on ITV1's top game show. And right in front of the television cameras. Tonight, for the first time, we can show you how they did it and how they got caught. We've got the tapes. We've got the witnesses. I'm saying, don't you, don't you dare, you rob dog. And we've got the coughs. <coughs> this is the dramatic story of the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire major fraud. It's a classic tale of greed and obsession, a desperate desire to win the biggest cash prize on British television by hook or by crook. It was here in this studio that eight cameras captured every move by the Major, his wife and their accomplice, while 21 microphones recorded every single guilty cough. We've isolated their soundtrack so that you can hear them clearly, just as the jury did during the trial. Tonight, we show you the evidence and reveal the major fraud. For the Ingrams, Millionaire's been a family obsession, with Diana's brother Adrian the first to get the bug. A contestant on the show four times, he finally makes it to the hot seat. Having coasted through 10 questions, he comes unstuck at 64,000 and bows out graciously with a cheque for 32,000 pounds. Little Sisters next on, and with husband Charles Ingram, appears on the couple's show. A bit of brotherly coaching pays off. And after some 300 phone calls to the show, Diana Ingram's in the hot seat at last. She equals her brother's performance and falls somewhat less graciously at the same hurdle. Finally, after two failed attempts, Charles Ingram makes it to the hot seat. The most infamous episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is about to begin. I really warmed to him, yeah. He had this terrible peer pressure in that his brother-in-law and his wife both had won £32,000. They were both quite sort of... They seemed to be quite obsessed with the show and getting on it and doing well. They both had got on it and done well. I mean, she went away very disappointed uh, with £32,000. So I remember talking to her in the bar afterwards, and I said, great, congratulations. And she said, yeah, only thirty-two. And I said to her, it's a huge amount of money. She went, yes, but I should have done more. I should have beaten my brother and all this. The first few questions are easy enough for the Major. But some uh, staff are concerned as soon as the Major takes the hot seat. Diana Ingram's younger brother, Marcus Powell, is also at the studio. Just after recording has started, um, probably about 15, 20 minutes into it really. Um, and he was outside the studio on his mobile phone, which mobile phones aren't allowed sort of in the studio area. So I went up to the production office um, where I'm full Chris Burke. And I just approached him and said, excuse me, saying I can't have you in and out of the studio using a phone. Um, either if you want to make a phone call, I can get someone to escort you off site and uh, you can make as many phone calls as you wish or would you please go back in the studio, take your seat. When I went back downstairs about 10-15 minutes later he was back outside on his mobile again and as soon as he saw me he went straight back in to the studio. Uh, at which point I asked one of our security guards to, to keep an eye on him for the rest of the recording um, and uh, to the best of my knowledge that's, that's exactly what he did. Police believe four vibrating phone pages could have signalled the right answer. I think that the, uh, the, the question and the options would have been transmitted via Marcus Powell's uh, open mobile phone uh, within the VIP area. I believe that the person on the other end with access to research material could then signal the wearer of those pages with the correct answer, A, B, C or D, depending on what part of the body the page was secreted. And then that person could either signal Charles Ingram or indeed Charles Ingram may have been wearing the pages himself. Marcus Powell's never been charged with any offence. So for now, Charles Ingram's on his own, and the £500 question's one he's bound to get right. Question five's the last time the Major can go home with nothing. But he's no intention of leaving empty-handed. On the next question, he's struggling, and there's no one to help. He's using a lifeline far too early in the game. And the next question's also a struggle. 
With just £2,000 in the pot, Charles Ingram's having to use his second lifeline. He wasn't the finest contestant we've ever had. He was struggling quite a bit, actually. So he got up to £4,000 by the end of the first night and used two lifelines. So we knew he was coming back the following evening, but expected him to last just a couple of questions or so and then be gone. As yep. the rollover uh, contestant, news, Charles, Charles Ingram has a few and precious and hours uh, to come up with a plan. Uh, still got a 50 He'll clearly struggle on his own. If you lose two lifelines, one lifeline left, you've struggled to that point. You know, you might be going home with 16,000, maybe 32. There's no way that you'd expect him to stay there for, for very much more than two or three questions, unless, you know, an incredibly lucky run of questions. But, you know, having sat through many hundreds of programmes, that wouldn't be what you'd expect to happen, really. He'd floundered through, but I think he had one lifeline left. And I remember us saying, God, that poor bloody major, you know, he's, he's got as much chance of getting the 32,000, you know, as going to the moon in a rocket. I mean, he, there was just no way this guy could, could possibly go much further. And I could see his wife sort of sitting up there behind him, sort of frowning at him. I thought, oh, God, and he's got his little girls and his promising ponies and all this. There's an unlikely saviour on the way. That night, the Ingrams call Tequin Whittock, another millionaire regular. And it's at this point he joins their scam. The major fraud is about to begin. Thank you very much indeed. So I'm looking forward to it. As the show begins again the next day, Charles Ingram and his co-conspirators have got a new plan to cheat. And it's going to work better than any of them dared imagine. In court. Diana Ingram claimed she'd never met Tequin Whittock or even knew what he looked like. Yet throughout the night, she's caught on camera apparently looking straight at him. Sat right behind the major with the other fastest finger first contestants, Whittock's been strangely quiet during the day. Well, I think he'd been on three times at least before. Um, and he was, a, he was an old millionaire hand and we were, we were new. Did he strike you as a determined contestant? He struck me as being very focused, so he wasn't in a chatty mood, I have to say. Um, yeah, perfectly polite and pleasant, but um, I think he was, he was focused on the evening in front of him. First question of the night, and they're cheating from the off. It's a first chance to test out their secret weapon. <coughs> that coughs from Tequin Whittock. You're hearing it in isolation as the jury did, much clearer than it would sound in any broadcast. And that's the plan, to cough after Ingram reads out the right answers. The Major seeks further confirmation from his accomplice. <coughs> and after that, Ingram's completely confident. My attention was first drawn to, to, to Major Ingram um, at around the £8,000 question when our floor assistant said to me, there's something strange going on. And that was really the first time that I'd focused at what was going on on the set. This is the only time all night the Major gets the right answer without a little help from his friends. Again, he lists the other answers just in case, but there's no need for a cough from Whittock. So, no cough. The Major knows he's right. Even without the coughs, his habit of reading all the answers sets antennae twitching. The acoustics within, um, the, the, you know, the, the, what I call the bowl of the studio are such that, you know, the sound is pretty much kept within it. And um, I was watching a monitor just on the other side. So at this point, there was absolutely no suggestion of, of, of any coughing or any noises whatsoever. This was just simply me now focused on the monitor, but kind of removed from the production of the programme. I'd become so suspicious that something untoward was going on um, that I then said to our, our floor manager that I wanted to find out whether we could search Major Ingram when he came off the set. My, my boss Adrian Wolfe came running across the studio when it in itself was a sight and um, he said we have a problem and uh, I didn't know what quite he meant but having then been told that he believed there was something funny going on with the contestant in the hot seat, um, we then concentrated on that. And I was by a monitor, so I was able to see the way the man was playing the game. And also I was able to stand behind the cameras looking directly at him 
and see for myself that it was unusual, if not completely strange, uh, the way he was attempting to answer the questions and the way he finally chose an answer. It was well out of any understanding or experience I'd ever had. £32,000, the third question of the night and a critical moment in the major fraud. Disaster. The major doesn't know the answer and neither does Whittock. The plan's out the window. I think, I think, I think it's A1. It's not. Does wife Diana Ingram know he's wrong? Is that another anxious look to Tequin Whittock? And again, it seems she's looking to Whittock. The two answers left were Craig David, who he admitted to have never heard of, and A1, who he had been gunning for all along. And when those two answers were left, he said, well, that doesn't give me any help, which, hang on a second, you've been saying A1 all along, so, and you, you didn't know Craig David, so why haven't you now gone, oh, it must be A1 then? Um, so, no, the man was playing a different game to anything I've ever seen. The major set on the wrong answer and needs help, but there's none coming from Whittock. Unaware her every move's recorded, it looks like Diana Ingram's preparing to help out. <coughs> if so, she's taking a massive gamble. His wife seems to check the studio televisions. Diana Ingram's not on screen, but the cameras are still rolling. She seems unable to hide her frustration. She must know he's wrong. It's the second answer he wants. <coughs> Diana coughs twice. Is that a clue? Has he heard her? Maybe not. It seems he's heard all right. Here comes the U-turn. But his wife's been spotted and the Ingrams are in trouble. <laughs> On the £32,000 question, it looks like Diana's taken a massive gamble to help her husband cheat, but she's been spotted. Mrs Ingram developed quite a nasty cough on that particular question. Um, the Major seemed to be struggling to answer it. Um, and there was enough concern for production to decide that they needed to, to stop the recording, um, to rewind the tape, to look back at it. So even at that stage, third question in, mm -hmm. on the night, mm -hmm. the recording is stopped because there's concern, suspicion? Yes, yes, there was some cause for concern. But not enough. The team let the show continue and no one's yet spotted Whittock. There was something in the air that was all a bit strange. And when I did come down to the studio, the, um, you know, the crew, some of them were just sort of shaking their heads going, something's definitely going on. A few of the millionaire team know something's wrong but can't quite work out what. He would make some humorous comment about each answer, how it couldn't be that because he didn't know it or it wasn't that or he was certainly wasn't that but he was doing that to all of them um, and then finally plumping for an answer that he disregarded sort of three efforts ago or three mentions before and so it was very odd. It wasn't the way anybody has ever played the game or before or since in any of the territories in the experience I've had. You've never seen anything like this anywhere in the world? No, not at all. No, it's, no this, was not, this was not a gambler's uh, way of playing. It wasn't somebody who knew the answer. There was no smile of recognition when an answer came up when you can see somebody knows the answer beforehand. And the boss again glances towards the hired help. My reading of him was that he was a sort of a, a mad major, you know, brave, brave as a lion, but completely balmy, you know, probably a bit thick, but, but very, you know, Tim, Tim but nice sort of thing. I mean, Tim but nice. And, he, and I thought he was like that. And I mean, he was extraordinary to, to be opposite. I mean, he was amazing to be opposite. He was, he was fascinated. The three conspirators are now playing for serious money. <laughs> and the cough from Whittock lets him know he's right. As the two men become more confident in their system, the coughs become more frequent. Again, Mrs Ingram looks towards Whittock. <laughs> the ever-helpful Whittock, just ten feet away, is there again. No wonder he's shaking. Charles Ingram's carrying out major fraud in front of a live studio audience. But Whittock's coughing is now drawing attention. After probably about five, ten minutes, he seems to be coughing all the time. It's just strange because he didn't cough before the show in rehearsals. 
I didn't cough uh, after the show, we was in the chair. Even those who haven't noticed the coughing smell a rat. Relatively early on, halfway through, I thought there might be something dodgy going on. Um, so what I did was I looked at his face. I assumed that it was going to be a visual clue of some sort, a visual code. So he would have a member of the audience somewhere in his eye line that would be giving him some subtle coded indication. A like, wink. like mm, not a wink. I mean, it's, you know, remember it's there in the light. The audience is in half light. So, you know, it would be, you know, like that for A or, or that for B or some, something fairly subtle. Um, so I, question after question, I was looking, I was locked onto his face uh, and, but I, I couldn't detect, I couldn't detect anything that was, he was, he didn't seem to be systematically looking at the crowd. But even during the recording, even during the game, you were pretty sure that something untoward yeah. was going on. Yeah. You were that convinced? Yeah, absolutely. I said to, to Marilyn and she felt the same. The pressure's rising as the money goes up. <laughs> Just five coughs so far from Tequin Wittock, but all subtlety will soon disappear as greed takes over. Here it comes. <coughs> Another guilty cough from Wittock. Diana Ingram seems nervous. Sure. She looks towards Tequin Wittock. There's no longer a decent pause between the coughs and Ingram choosing his answer. The team believe that to escape scot-free with the cash, this is when Charles Ingram should take the money and run. You were struggling more at £200 than you are now. I think if they bailed out 125000 I don't think any of us would be sat here. I think it's just pushed that little bit too far. And as I said, every step of the way up, there's more evidence that you've got to argue away one way or another. And it may well be easy to argue away three questions with a cough. But, you know, when you're talking about 17, 18 persistent coughs at specific points, that appear to be leading somebody. I think you back yourself into a corner. But the two men can't resist temptation. It's to be the undoing of all of them. I think it was when it was getting on for sort of serious money, probably when we sort of got to one, two, five. I think that's probably when, you know, I mean, I definitely thought something very strange was going on. You're seeing something happen in front of you. You think that there might be collusion going on. You think there might be cheating going on. You're not 100% sure. It's difficult. It certainly is not my call to stop the programme. It had been stopped once already. I was alerted by the sound supervisor, Kevin Duff, and by our director to listen out because on the microphones they could hear some coughing going on. And obviously in the studio there's always spluttering and bits of coughing going on, but this seemed uh, more systematic, so I listened out. And uh, I was directed to look in the audience but I soon realised that it was actually coming from another contestant. When you hear the coughs which are adjacent to the right answers, when you first hear them, you're looking to see if the pattern stays, you know, if it's a pattern that's going to be repeated and sustained throughout the series of, the series of questions. But after a while, when it is, your reaction on hearing it is one of humour. I mean, you start to laugh, really. When the coughs come up right on cue, you think, gosh, there it is again. Chris Tarrant clearly reminding the Major who, with his wife, has debts of more than £50,000 that the stakes are high. It's a thing I do a lot. I sort of repeat it as, 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 as the money goes up and up and up. And with the Major, I constantly seem to be bringing him back to earth. And you'd see him go, yes, right, yes, thanks for that. Anyway, ignore all that and carry on. Have a look at number the next question would form a key part of the prosecution case at their trial. Tequin Whittock is caught on tape getting the answer from his unsuspecting neighbour. Armed with the answer, Whittock's ready for action. <coughs> Two coughs and he's not finished yet. Well, this is the famous hat question, of course. What type of garment is an Anthony Eden? And here we've got Chris Tarrant going through the various possibilities. An overcoat, a shoe, a hat, of course, which is the right answer, or a tie. And what we hear at the same time as this 
is conversation among the FFF contestants where one man with a Cockney accent, Mr Lucy, Thomas Lucy, in fact confirms that it is a hat. Just after he confirms it's a hat, you hear Ingram say to Tarrant, I think it's a hat, and of course Whittock's there right on cue. <coughs> but his unwitting helper remembers things differently. A question had been asked and the answer had been given and as I turned around to look towards my son, uh, Tequin Whittock said to me, did you know that answer? And I said, yes, I did. Why do you think he asked you that question? I, I don't know. I think it was probably just because I turned around and I was sort of looking his way just for something to say. He continues his private conversation with Whittock. <coughs> well, he's sure now. Three coughs in the one question. Tequin Whittock and Charles Ingram are overdoing things. It's easy for me to realise that it was Tequin doing the coughing because he was only about 10 or 15 feet away from me, directly in front of me. And the way he was coughing was rather bizarre. Um, he was actually turning towards the set to cough. So at one point he was chatting to the contestant to his left in a whispered way and then he would turn round a full 90 degrees with his head, cough towards the hot seat and then turn away again. But Whittock's about to risk everything as the Major nearly blows the lot. As Chris Tarrant asks the penultimate question, Charles Ingram suddenly makes a big mistake. I think it's Berlin. It's not. He quickly rules out the other options. He forgets the system and fails to check slowly round the answers. He's giving Whittock no opportunity to help. Tequin Whittock risks everything. <coughs> and he's going for Berlin, you can hear he's going for Berlin, and then all of a sudden you hear a cough which is now acknowledged to be from Whittock, which is, <coughs> no! <coughs> no! And the no is partly in whisper, but it's a loud no like that. When I say partly in whisper, it's not no, it's no! and it comes right on the heels of the cough. No. No. So, in a way, what, what, what the cough is doing there, what Mr Whittock's doing there, is breaking the code, the agreed code, but he can only do that by putting a no there with his cough. Otherwise, Ingram would interpret the cough as meaning Berlin is the right answer. Moments later, is this a new signal? <coughs> the effect of the nose blow seems immediate. Is a cough. There's a no, and then just after that, there's a, a little series of nose blowing as well. The nose blowing only ever happened at that point, um, and it's only my subjective opinion, but I think if you've got a system, you've got to have a, an all-stop signal, because otherwise you could end up in a, you know, a very difficult position, and I think that was probably part of their all-stop signal. The all-stop was the nose blowing? I think so. And, of course, the, the word no. Well, that helps. <coughs> Just as he's dismissing Paris, Tequin Whittock's cough stops him mid-sentence. He was convinced that it was Berlin, you know, prompted by the fact that he believed that Barnhausmann was a, a German name, um, and kept focusing on Berlin. I mean, he went on and on and on about Berlin. And um, then he says something to the effect of, but it could be. Paris and then gets a cough. Now he freezes. He just he freezes for the moment. He obviously completely regains his thoughts because I think that he has relatively convinced himself that it is um, the answer is Berlin. Ingram now makes another U-turn. <laughs> is that the all-stop signal again? Diana stares in Whittock's direction. They're pushing their luck. <sighs> A fastest finger first contestant's about to link the Major's answers to Whittock's coughs. It suddenly occurs to me that this, this bloke's being helped out here. And as soon as I have that thought, almost as soon... It's the bloke who's coughing. You know, this is what's going on in, on in my mind. It wasn't a long process, it was almost immediate. It's the bloke who's coughing. He's, you know, is he sending him signals? So I've immediately alighted on Tekken Whittock. And during the course of that question, lo and behold, he does come right round the houses, goes for the answer that he originally discarded, and uh, 
Tekwam Whittock did cough in the right place. <laughs> Ingram responds to the cough immediately. Charles Ingram checks for a fourth and final okay. time. Q Whittock. <coughs> The Major clearly delighted after so nearly blowing it all on Berlin. It takes four guilty coughs from Tequin Wittock to get him there. Yet still, most of the audience and the man sat opposite him are unaware he's cheating. I had no idea of anything going on at all. To be honest, once it gets up to the big money, I've got like a very, very concentrated job to do. So really, short of somebody, you know, sending up smoke signals or lighting a bonfire in the audience. I mean, I would not pick anything up normally. Um, just in, I mean, I'm this close to someone. I'm eyeball to eyeball. So, no, I'm not aware of anything at all. And, and I was genuinely amazed when I came off air that there was, um, you know, murmurings and suspicion that something might have, might, have, might have happened that night that was illegal. The cheating majors still in the hot seat. He's right. risking Whatever everything to, I... to win his million. The cheats are about to be rumbled. I'm entirely focused on Tequin Whittock. Um, he's sitting over there. In he's the sitting third. over there at seat three. I know what the, the answer to the question is before the four answers come up. So I can really study the process between these two people. It seems his wife can't believe he's playing on. The mood in the production office is strangely flat. Normally I probably would be quite excited that, you know, one of my contestants has won a lot of money. Um, but because I, I had some doubt in my mind that something strange was going on, I don't think I could really sort of get enthusiastic about it, really. And again, the Major checks round the answers, one by one. And once again, if you listen carefully, the tapes reveal Tequin Whittock checking the answer. God. Whittock now has the million pound answer, but Whittock has... Google. <coughs> I'm waiting for Tequin Whittock to cough at precisely the moment that the Major mentions the word Google. And the first time he mentions the word Google, cough, cough, gotcha. I'm also thinking during that process, <laughs> which is almost completely the opposite of that, I'm thinking, don't you, don't you dare, don't you dare, I'll have you. I'm thinking that at the same time as I'm thinking, I want you to, to cough because I want, I want this, I want, I want to, to know that I'm right in what I've been, in my suspicions. He revisits all four to check the answer with Whittock a second time. <laughs> as Whittock coughs, it seems he's again under the watchful eye of the Major's wife. No wonder she seems worried. His wife's not laughing and again looks towards Whittock. He was about to answer the million pound question, which means that he stands to win a million pounds, but he also stands to lose, if he's wrong, £468,000. A tidy sum to anybody. And it became obvious that he wasn't under the pressure that he should have been, somehow. It didn't make sense. He should have been very, very careful and very certain. And he certainly wasn't both of those, or either of those, I should say. But Ingram's not gambling at all. He's been given the answer. I miss quite a lot of um, the, the action um, of the, the, the questions between the 64 and I think about the quarter of a million pound question because um, the frantic phone calls were going on. Um, but the fact that he was still there without actually knowing what was going on um, confirmed my suspicions. And, and certainly when watching the million pound question, you know, my heart was pumping. <laughs> I came into the studio and I saw Adrian and he asked me if I thought that there was anything suspicious going on um, and I had been uneasy up until that point and, and we basically discussed whether there was any possibility of cheating, whether he could have got hold of the questions beforehand or whether his wife or he had any kind of device on them or if indeed he was being helped by anyone else in the audience. Again he checks round the answers <coughs> and again sorry, Whittock sorry, delivers. Sorry. After three separate coughs on the million pound question, Ingram still wants one final signal. <coughs> it's there. In the break, as they wait to see if Charles Ingram's won a million, there's furious activity backstage. 
the head of Celador is called to see if the show should be stopped. They said that they were on the commercial break and they were about to go back and say that the guy had won a million. But they were certain that there was some form of cheating going on. What should they do? I called Paul and I said to him that I felt very strongly that he ought to come up to the studio that night. He initially was very dismissive. Um, and I said, well, what evidence do you have? And they said, well, just gut instinct. And I said, well, we, we can't stop a show and accuse someone on gut instinct. I said, you must go ahead and we will deal with it later. The contestant who spotted the cheats isn't clapping. Well, I'm just sitting there, uh, glaring at uh, Tequan Wittig, probably glaring at the Major as well. And I, my reaction is I can't believe that it, I seem to be the only person who's witnessed what I've seen. You know, I, am I the only one here who's seen this? Did I really see this? You know, what's going on here? Why has nobody else noticed what's happening here? Tom Lucy, sitting opposite Larry, is equally unimpressed. When the programme finished, I walked from here and I met my son coming down the stairs over there. And as he looked at me, he said he was at it, Dad. And I said, do you think so? He said, definite. When the Major won his million pounds, it was quite a strange atmosphere in here because building up to that, there'd been a feeling of disbelief amongst the crew anyway because we strongly suspected he was cheating. And then when he got to the million pounds, the atmosphere wasn't how it should be at all. And I noticed that certain members of the crew, not all of them, but some of them weren't sure how to react because they were obviously had suspicions of their own. Um, I noticed some of them were slow clapping and just looking at me, not really sure how to, what to do. And I just basically said, come on, you know, we've got to, we've got to maintain that this is a genuine win until we know otherwise. I was there when Judy's Keppel won, won her million. Um, and the whole production team, everybody was elated. It was a, a fantastic moment, um, especially having been with the show since the start. You know, you really want somebody to get there and you really want somebody to take that, that little step and do it. Um, but because of the way, that, uh, the way that it appeared the Major had got to this point, as I say, everybody was just incredibly uncomfortable. I was down just sort of offset where um, they sort of came off and hugged each other and Diana was crying. But, I mean, I didn't totally believe that it was real tears. It sort of, to me, was a bit put on and seemed sort of a bit fake. Literally, they'd walk down the steps from um, the edge of the set and the way that it was put to them um, after congratulating them was that it was common practice with big winners um, that we searched them for security reasons and would they object to having such a search done. I searched his clothing, I searched his hair, I even asked him to take his shoes off. Um, and I found nothing. And the feeling that I was left with at that time was incredibly disappointed um, because my suspicions hadn't, um, hadn't uh, gone away. Um, I was just left feeling, well, um, I don't quite understand what's gone on here. <laughs> After being searched, the Ingrams are taken to their dressing room, but rather than celebrating, have a huge row. Security guards sort of pointed out that the sort of shouting coming from the, their dressing room um, and their window was open, so, you know, as soon as they, he said that, we all sort of listened, and of course, you know, there was raised voices coming from there. Um, and as the security guard sort of went a bit nearer to the window to see if he could hear what was being said, the window was slammed shut. There was an atmosphere between the two of them in the dressing room when I was there, an atmosphere dominated by her, and the impression was that something was not as it should be, definitely. Diana looked very sort of shaken and... I mean, just look physically, sort of just not very happy. Um, and Charles was very tense. Um, and at that point he had a cigar, so he was, a lot of his attention was sort of looking down on the floor, playing with the ash in the ashtray, and just generally not saying very much at all. These two people had just won a million pounds. They should have been ecstatically happy. They should have wanted to speak to the children. They should have wanted to speak to the dog. They should have wanted to do something other than be as miserable as they seemed um, and the atmosphere in hindsight in, and this is speculation is that he had gone further than they had agreed that he would go and as a result he had possibly exposed himself to what has now happened the trial and the subsequent decision of the jury <laughs> <laughs>
While the Ingrams are fighting, the man who claims his allergies made him cough takes centre stage and gets into the hot seat immediately after Ingram. His cough now gone, Whittock finds it's not so easy playing it straight. As soon as the show's over, the team begin their search for evidence of cheating. That million pound cheque can be cashed in eight days' time. I got into my car and went up to the studio centre. I said to them to keep the, 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 the gallery, the, the truck, powered up. Uh, could they put all the tapes up for me and I would have a look at them. We sat together and watched through the programmes. Um, and to Paul's credit, I have to say, he did try and play devil's advocate with me. Um, he tried to, re as best he could, to refute each one of the coughs when I said, well, there, Paul, that one, there, that one. He would, you know, do his best. Um, as we got further up the money tree, um, he got quieter and quieter until we got to the, the million pound question when he was silent and quite pale. The police are called in and Paul Smith has to ring Charles Ingram to tell him he's not getting his million. I have to tell you that, that we have suspicions from viewing the recording of last Monday's uh, programme and subsequently studying the tapes carefully that there were irregularities during the taping of the show in which you participated. Oh, good Lord, no. Because of that, I have to tell you that these suspicions have been referred to the police. Right. And thus, we, for not for the moment, will be airing the programme or indeed authorising payment of the cheque. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I completely refute that, obviously. Um, good Lord, I'm absolutely gobsmacked. All right, well, thanks for letting me know. Okay, thank you. Mm. Cheers, bye. What effectively I was saying was, you have cheated us of a million pounds on our show. And... I would have suspected that I would have, if I'd have been him in that situation, I would have said, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, you know, what are you talking about? With that extraordinary call, the game's up for Charles and Diana Ingram and Tequin Whittock. The Major resorts to his favourite strategy, the counter-attack. I did not cheat, if I can use that very firm expression, to cover everything. I can't say that there wasn't coughing going on, but I did not um, either hear or use coughing as any form of mechanism for being able to answer those questions. Two weeks ago, a jury convicted Charles Ingram, his wife Diana, and their accomplice Tequin Whittock of deception. The judge told them to give up any childish wishes they might have that they're entitled to the money. Their reputations ruined, branded cheats and liars. They risked everything to con their way to a million pounds and lost it all.